Okay, we're going to go ahead and go through soil bulk density, uh, moisture, and aeration. And bulk density is an indicator of soil compaction and soil health overall. And it's simply a measure of the weight per unit volume. So we're going to be using this cylinder, this aluminum cylinder. So we're going to determine the amount of weight of soil and organic matter per unit volume. It infects, affects infiltration, it impacts rooting depth restrictions, uh, nutrient availability, available water capacity, soil porosity, which is really important to all the soil micro, microorganism activity, uh, etc. Uh, it's going to vary by texture. Uh, so, for example, a sandy soil, which you might think would have a higher bulk or a lower bulk density, actually has a higher bulk density because it has less pore space less available water than, for example, a silt loam soil. The soil is made up of four, on figure one, it shows four major soil components, organic matter uh, in the mineral, and then uh, the pore space is either air or water. Uh, so when we do bulk density, we're, we will dry the soil so we get rid of the water out of the pore space. Some, again, inherent factors that impact it are your soil organic matter, which you can manage for somewhat, and, and soil texture are going to be the primary things that impact bulk density. Managing for it, anything we can do to decrease compaction, how we manage our traffic in the field, uh, our soil cover, our soil organic matter, uh, those types of things, anything that, that can Decreased compaction, increased soil organic matter is going to be a positive. Uh, <clears throat> the other importance of bulk density, if our soil is so compacted that we've lost our pore space, we have less porosity, we have less habitat for our soil microorganisms and they cannot function, they don't have as much of a house to work with. The importance of, of, of pore space is it hold, that's where our water is held for our crops. Also, that's the, again the habitat for the soil microorganisms and things such as our nitrogen cycling, our decomposition, all of the things that, that would occur in the soil to, to make it a healthy functioning soil. It's important to have good porosity. Uh, also, that uh, there's on figure five, it shows the relationship of water filled pore space. So, when once we get close to field capacity, low moisture soil. Also, we have uh, warmer soils up to a point. We're going to have more activity uh, and, and along with better porosity, that's going to be a better thing for soil microorganisms. Uh, in there, we have table one that lists the ideal bulk densities for different textures. So you need to be able to determine textures. And then it also has or bulk densities that are going to impact root growth. Uh, when we go to the field, uh, one of the best things to do is, is to take a wire flag and insert it into the field and find some areas where you think you might have uh, problems with bulk density. Uh, also also in, in, in the guide it shows figure four. It shows where we have a compacted uh, tillage zone and you can take out a tile spade and quickly find those areas because you have real platy structure in the soils. Also, uh, if you use a tile spade, you can uh, figure three shows a compacted area from a <clears throat> where the roots don't want to go or they go laterally. Uh, so that's really easy to see if you have uh, some bulk density problems.